What are your cringy, I'm not like other girls stories that you're embarrassed about or were unfortunate enough to witness? Story 1. Friend of mine started dating the single most dramatic girl I've ever met. We lived on the fourth floor. We always took the elevator. So we all get in to go down to the lunch hall and she literally dashes for the corner and starts rocking back and forth in a really sad act of being terrified. He runs over to hold her and explains she's terrified of elevators. First, she lives with us on the same floor for two months and we've all seen her on the elevator acting normal. Second, if you were really terrified of elevators, you'd just walk the four floors. It wasn't even that far up. Third, her acting was just terrible. Of course, a few weeks later, she forgot all about it and went back to acting normal on elevators again. I really like this story. Fun fact, I am actually really anxious on escalators, but I just tend to tense up and be really, really conscious of where my feet are. But I still ride them when there aren't other convenient options, so I would have tried giving the benefit of the doubt here, but it sounds like she was full of it. Story 2. In high school, one of my teachers asked everyone to say one word describing themselves, and I said, classy. I die inside every time I remember it. Story 3. A girl at school once commented on my Facebook picture, you look cute, heart, and edgy me said, thanks, you're not getting a heart back, that would be dumb. Story 4. I remember being like 14 and this 16-year-old guy asked me what my fantasy was and I said, well, I mean, most girls would like to have Prince Charming on a white horse, but I don't like horses. I'm just different like that. He definitely meant naughty fantasies, not like romance, but I needed him to know I was cool and didn't like horses like other girls. This is so frickin' funny. Story 5. I used to think I was so cool for not knowing how to order a Starbucks drink because I just drink regular coffee. By the way, I've always hated black coffee. I pretended to like black coffee for so long. So good to be in my mid-twenties and not care slash feel like I drank battery acid. Look, you can't appreciate the complexity of a perfectly brewed cup of black coffee. That's fine. But don't pretend like you've ascended because you like the taste of cream and sugar. Granted, Starbucks isn't brewing anything I would seek out, but still, black coffee is so good, I am literally going to stop recording and go make myself a cup right the hell now. Story 6. One of my best friends in high school decided to take a class in car mechanics. This friend also had zero interest in cars. When I asked her about it, I found out she has this fantasy of being that girl who walks into a boys-only class and shows them all up. When she got to class the first day and there were three other girls enrolled, she was pretty unhappy. Story 7. I have the reverse version of this story. I'm a gay man, but hadn't come to terms with that at this point in my life, ninth grade. I had a girlfriend, but we were both good Christians, so we mostly just watched Disney movies and hung out. One night, we were lying on the trampoline after watching Pocahontas, and she said, Gustav Holler, I like you because you don't want what the other boys want. She was absolutely right. Story 8. I was phoning a girl in middle school, and I was showing her my taxidermy bugs, and she said, despite me not being a girl, lol, she said lol, other girls shop for heels and stuff while we collect stickers and bugs. L-O-L. I can't tell if she said LOL or lol. I, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm supposed to say. I switch back and forth. I just, I don't say it in my life. So, those of you in the comments pointing it out, that's why. Because I'm an adult and I just laugh. Story 9. A girl I had an extremely brief, not even one night stand with sent me a questionnaire survey she made over a year later asking me how she had performed and what would I change about her. We hadn't really talked in the meantime nor since, but I did fill it out for her for a laugh. I didn't realize she wasn't joking. I'm pretty sure I recall seeing the girl side of this on TikTok a few days ago. Story 10. I wore Argyle knee-high socks and Converse with my homecoming dress. I wore boxers under my skinny jeans like those emo guys in the early 2000s. I put maxi pads on my shoulders and told people I was going to try out for the football team. Okay, that third one's just funny, though. Story 11. I was my best friend's maid of honor a few years back, and we were wedding dress shopping, and this one quirky bride came in like, Whatever dress I get has to go with my red chucks. I am not one of those girls who wear heels. I've always been different. And the shop lady was like, 
Actually, second to a traditional heel or ballet flat, chucks are a super common choice for our many low-maintenance brides. And her whole attitude just deflated. When the kid realizes the counterculture is just a different culture and it's still a group of people who are all similar. Oh geez, I thought I was a stoner after the first time I smoked weed. I bought this Bob Marley shirt I wore all the time and made Rasta-colored bracelets and I felt so cool. Passed out on a rock band drum set after smoking a blunt like it was a cigarette and decided that wasn't the life for me. Passed out on a rock band drum set. God bless my friend. God bless you. Yeah, you can't just start calling yourself a stoner. You've got to work at it like the rest of us. Story 13. I wasn't like other girls because I loved hats. Top hats, specifically. For like a year in sixth grade, I wore a top hat to school, and I thought I was the crap. It's funny now, but oh my god, did I cringe for years after it. And of tiny, tiny top hats, I was dangerously close to being sucked into the steampunk trend of tiny, tiny top hats. Story 14. I took four years of auto body repair in high school because I was clearly different than all the other girls. I did end up really liking it, but I started for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, but now you can repair an auto body. Story 15. I spent my middle school years wearing fake coontail extensions and saying, I'll kill you, to anyone who tried talking to me, especially other girls. I don't know what the frick was wrong with me, but I'm still lying awake at night replaying it all a decade later. It's like 2 a.m. and I'm dying at this comment, laugh my butt off. Just picturing someone walking up to you like, hey, and you slowly turn to them coontails dangling, I'll kill you. Story 16. I hated anything new or trendy because I thought I was cool and contrary to it. From ages 13 to 16. I like not to think about it. Same. Avoided mainstream music and only I listened to offbeat quirky stuff that no one had ever heard of. And I could only get online because it wasn't available in stores. I listen to some mainstream stuff now, but I don't hide the offbeat stuff I used to listen to. It had a lot to do with shaping my musical taste now, so it's a part of me. Story 17. Lady next door needed help breaking into her probably not son's friend's car. She said she could do it with fishing line and I happened to like to fish, so I had some braided heavy pound test and offered it to her. She pulls the amount she needs and tries to break in with her teeth for a while. Me. Ma'am, that's a braided line. Her. Oh no, honey, I'm a country girl. That's beautiful. I never realized being born in the south slash a rural area means you can basically chew through steel. When you're born in the South, you're built differently. Teeth like diamonds. Story 18. I used to think I was a natural witch after watching The Craft for the first time. It was so cringy. The moodiest middle schooler ever. I miss it. Story 19. I'm 29, so I lived as a preteen during the peak AIM days. Putting up away messages was crap. Eating dinner with your family? Let the world know. Be right back? Let them know. Taking a shower? Tell everyone. One of my away messages for just that was save water, shower with me with the kissy face that had the little beauty mark for some reason. OG AIM users, you know the one. I was honestly like 11. Literally had never kissed a boy. Guaranteed I was also still wearing overalls, keds, and bucket hats. I'm a fourth grade teacher now and I realize now that I was an actual baby at the time. I cringe just thinking about it. Overall, I would really like to go back in time and smack some sense into me. I had one that said, save the trees, eat more beavers, and my dad freaked out. Thought I was funny, but I was 11 and had no idea what the other kind of beaver was. Story 20. Girl in uni said she wasn't like other girls because she could hold her liquor like a man. So went shot for shot with this big dude. People tried to stop her, but she was going to prove herself. She kept saying she was fine. Finally, when she flat out passed out and we ended up having to take her to the ER for what was alcohol poisoning, was pretty clear she was just super stupid in that moment. Bartender here, I always try to slow somebody's roll when they're going shot for shot like this. Story 21 In high school, I had this friend who tried so hard to be one of the guys to the point where she would call herself that often. I didn't realize how cringy she was until I ran into her at a party in my 20s. She walked up to my boyfriend, currently my fiancé, grabbed his hat, put it on her head backwards, then asked for a haul of his cigarette, she doesn't even smoke, and coughed profusely. She then proceeded to punch him in the stomach and started calling herself one of the guys again. A few of us just looked at each other awkwardly and slowly trickled away. I just love the phrase slowly trickled away. 
I don't know why, folks, but some of these I just have a hard time believing. I, I can't quite pinpoint why, but these just sound so fake. Come on, folks, give me something good. I was into Sonic games when I was about 10 or something, and obviously that made me one of a frickin' kind. I also got into more video games in my teens, which was just, no female person has ever played a video game ever, and this one plays several? Story 23. I always loved dolls and dressing up as a kid. I would spend all my free time playing with my dolls, but when I went to school, I would scoff at the other girls for playing with dolls. I wanted to be seen as tough and cool. Spoiler, I was neither of those things. For my 10th birthday, my parents worked together to build me some doll furniture. Dad did a lot of woodworking and mom was good with a sewing machine. Together, they created a cool little wardrobe and bed set for my dolls. They were painted white and had little flower stickers for decoration. My dad had even made a little mirror for my dolls to go on the inside of one wardrobe door. My mom had sewn up a mini mattress for the bed. I just about cried when I opened my presents because I loved them so much. But my friend was sitting right beside me, and I knew if I told my parents I loved the presents, my friends would know I liked dolls. My lies would be undone. So I said, thanks, but I don't like dolls. They're for babies. My parents looked so freaking sad. I'm 25 years old, and I'm crying as I type this because I still feel so freaking guilty 15 years later. A few years ago, I got drunk at a family gathering, and I sobbed to my dad and apologized for what I said and told him I loved the present. He knew. So I got my apology out, but I still feel like such a C. Look, you shouldn't feel too bad. Parents should fully expect their children to do stuff like this as they're figuring themselves out. Any parent who would hold it against a child, well, they're the ones acting like a child. Story 24. I wanted to be emo, but my parents wouldn't let me dye my hair or buy me new clothes, so I was just an ugly middle school girl with a crappy attitude and Bobby Jack outfits. Sounds like my goth phase. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 25. I think the most embarrassing thing I can recall is my friend doing the nice gesture of showing me a song she thought I would like because I was always going on about liking techno instead of pop. I listened for a few seconds, scoffed, frowned. Remind me to show you some real music, I told her. What I showed her later was the competition music from Nintendogs by opening up my DS and entering a competition. I cringed so hard I forgot what I was doing. Story 26. There was a point in my life when I felt like I'm not like other girls. If I, one, don't complain too much, don't be too emotional, have no strong opinions about anything, and basically go with the flow as much as I can. This led to having no boundaries and a lot of repressed mental health issues on my part. Two, can be a jack of all trades and knowledgeable about many different hobbies and interests. This led to having a lot of equipment I barely use anymore, spending a lot more money, and I feel like I can never get past the basics of everything, which made me lose my sense of self. Three, I basically didn't have my own identity, and I could be any girl you wanted me to be. I'm not like other girls because I am all girls. I'm Whitney Houston. I'm every woman. Story 27. I probably had most of my cringe moments as a teenager. I used to think I was cool because instead of using MSN or MySpace to gossip with my schoolmates, I was on IRC and playing Counter-Strike or Diablo 2 with my online buddies. I only listened to metal, and I always wore black clothing while decking myself out in chains. <laughs> on the plus side, with social media being in its infancy, most of my blunders have long been forgotten or were never immortalized online. I still have some quirky interests, I guess, but I don't shy away from the mainstream either. And now, I like to think of myself as a reasonably well-adjusted lady. I think everyone gets a pass for cringy teenage behavior slash phases. <laughs> we would have been good friends. Still, not a social butterfly, but holy crap am I glad I grew as a person. If there's one thing every adult eventually realizes is that we are all cringy as teenagers. Painfully so. Any adult who doesn't think they were cringy is probably cringy as hell as an adult. Story 28. I thought I was not like other girls because I didn't drink or party. I thought I was above my classmates who did. In reality, I was just jealous because I was never invited. Probably because I was such a snob. I was totally a pick-me, and I cringe when I think about it. Story 29. 
I played the ukulele and sang like a stereotypical wannabe manic pixie dream girl. I also tried to get into riding a motorcycle, but broke my foot on it on a motorcycle safety course designed to teach new riders how to ride. I refuse to even be a passenger on one of those things now. So freaking different and adventurous, shake my head. I want to punch the teenage version of me in the face sometimes. Story 30 Someone I know got up in front of her class in middle school and made a speech about why women aren't fit to be president. No, she doesn't believe that anymore, and yes, she dies inside every time she thinks about it. At least she changed her mind. My mother-in-law told my four-year-old that she can be whatever she wants except president because women are too emotional. Story 31. Something so cliché it hurts to even talk about. I'm a girl. I work at GameStop here in Germany, so one might assume I'm into video games. And for most people, this isn't even something special anymore, so not even a thing worth mentioning. But we had that female customer who came into our shop and wanted to buy one of the Call of Duty games. I don't remember which one. And with the straightest face ever, she came to the counter and told me, obviously female, and my male colleague without asking, yeah, that's right, I am a girl that plays video games. I love playing with my male friends. Like it was so rare and so special and she felt so cool. Like so, so cool. I could barely keep a straight face while my colleagues sold her the game and we burst out laughing after she left the store. To be fair, back in the 90s, I hid that I spent 80% of my free time playing Sonic the Hedgehog games, because my female friends would give me a hard time about how immature it was. My favorite was the pinball one. I was in my 20s. Hey, Sonic Spinball ruled. Let's play. Story 32. When I was in middle school, we had to make these desk nameplates for some teachers, and one of my friends was drawing on hers and wrote, I am an otaku, so what? When she showed me, I said, why that? No one ever said anything about you liking anime. She got upset and didn't talk to me for a week. For context, I am from Latin America, so liking anime isn't something weird, and she wasn't the only one who watched anime in my class either. My mom watched Dragon Ball and Naruto growing up to learn English, so when I was chilling on Netflix the other day watching Naruto, she sat down and really enjoyed it. It was nice. It was the pain arc. Story 33. I refused to wear the skirts in my school uniform and wore trousers instead, even though 95% of the girls wore skirts. Then in my first year of school, I tried on skirts and felt like an idiot for suffering for four years straight with trousers just so I didn't look like the other girls. Story 34. Oh, good lord, there are so many. At one point, I based my entire personality off of the fact that I listened to metal and that preference made me different and special. I honestly looked down on girls for liking pop or even the color pink. In retrospect, I think I was just lashing out about how people focused so much on my femininity. Also, speculation about crushes and stuff. And I took it out on anything remotely feminine. In my defense, I was also like 10 years old. I was friends with my high school friends because we were headbangers. That's it sole reason. Story 35. I cringe now, but it was the girls are too much drama phase for me. I was the drama. It's taken me a long time to stop looking at other women as competition. Now I crave female friendships. I've known a few women who would get competitive around other women and uh, keeping them around. In fact, my ex had almost exclusively male friends. She even left me for one of them. <laughs> That's not fair. It was a good breakup, but it's still funny. Story 36. I used to wear a fedora and watch MLP. Fortunately, I stopped shortly before the neckbeard stereotype really solidified. God was really watching out for me on that one. Story 37. I used to wear super high socks with bright pink mid-calf converse, usually accompanied with a punk screamo band hoodie. I was very not like other girls. Other girls had style and I had bright pink abominations. Oof, those bright pink mid-calf converse got me. I had plaid ones that I wore with mismatched knee socks because I was so random. I still cringe at my manic pixie dream girl phase. Though truth be told, I still wear mismatched socks, but that's out of convenience now. Story 38. As a teenage girl who grew up listening to classic rock, you can bet your butt I was one of those annoying, ugh, modern music sucks, I wish I grew up in the 60s, 70s, 80s, etc. type girls. Thankfully, I grew out of it, and if I could go back in time and talk some sense into my younger self, I would. Story 39. This was in middle school, but back when I was the ultimate pick-me girl. I hated One Direction and was very vocal about it. I had no reason. Everyone else loved them, so I wasn't like other girls. Same with Justin Bieber, but he did turn out to be a dong. 
Story 40. Technically, I'm talking about a guy, but it's basically the same. So we were in Spanish class, 8th grade. We were in a unit about activities and how to say what you like to do and what you don't like to do. One of the words was listening to music. One kid in my class who was infamous for being extremely pretentious raised his hand and said, Is there a word for making music? This on its own isn't that bad, I guess, but after the teacher answered him, the teacher also said that making music is cool. The kid started saying, yeah, I'm a musician. I think a lot of people think I'm pretty out there because of it. Then he started talking to the kid next to him about his music the entire class. Oh, and another story with the same kid, we were in drama class one time. Every class we would get a question we have to answer when roll call gets to us. On that day, the question was, who is a musician you really like? Well, it gets to that kid, and I crap you not, he says himself. Hey, they say that you need to love yourself, just maybe not so publicly and in such an absolutely cringeworthy way. Story 41. With almost everything I did, I felt proud of myself for supposedly not being like other girls. I didn't wear the same type of clothes other girls wore, I didn't wear makeup, I was so unique because I liked anime, all that kind of stuff. I tried way too hard to make friends with guys because apparently I thought they were better than girls for some reason. I cringe looking back on it, but I also feel sad about it. Girls shouldn't feel pitted against each other. Despite my best friends being girls, I thought that I didn't get along with other girls in general because I wanted to distance myself from the media representation. Exactly the same as you about trying to make friends with guys. I was so dumb. Story 42. Mine was when I was just trying to pretend I could work on cars because I had changed my own oil once. So I was bragging to my sister and some of our guy friends about being such a bad butt girl and I told her I'd change hers. I got down to it and I was draining the oil and noticed it looked really clean. It was transmission fluid. I drained the transmission fluid. Story 43. My Facebook history came up to haunt me with this today. Seven years ago I posted, I just burnt my tongue on a piece of pizza and I think that's a very strong metaphor that sometimes the things you love most in life will hurt you. Oof, I mean, you're not wrong. She might not be wrong, but in that instance, do you really want to be right? Story 44. I'm not like other girls. I'm strong and independent. Girl, you justifiably left your husband, and two weeks later, your strong, independent self moved your two-year-old daughter in with a guy you met a week earlier because you can't bear to be single, and haven't been for more than a month since you were 13. Wow, this perfectly describes my sister-in-law. S woman so blind to her own codependency. She is our Ann Perkins, who essentially takes on the personality of each dude she is with. Story 45 my not-like-other-girls phase was unfortunately the hyper-religious kind. I'd wear the most unflattering clothes possible because modesty smugly muttering modest is hottest at all the other girls who were, in hindsight, justifiably upset with the school dress code. I also blared contemporary Christian music from my phone far too often during sports events. The list goes on. Luckily, it didn't last that long, and I was able to actually get to know some of the other girls and made some good friends by the end of high school. Story 46 I do not know what actually possessed me to do this, but once in like third grade, we took a field trip and were riding in a charter bus. I had a massive crush on the boy sitting in front of me, and his slightly older brother was sitting with him. We had passed something that smelled terrible, and they were like, oh my god, what is that? And I literally tapped one of them, was like, yeah. I'm so sorry, that was me. But I hadn't even farted. And then I told them about two or three more farts I had and apologized if they smelled them. I don't know why. Or what the frick was wrong with me. It was the only reason I could think of to talk to them, I guess? I don't know who this young lady is, but this is funny and kind of weirdly adorable. A good note to end things on. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.